Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I'm Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I love Christmas songs and Christmas carols. And uh, I just think they're very, I just think they're filled with a lot of joy, right? Although I cannot imagine having to work in a mall or in a store that starts playing carols at the end of November. It would be sort of like an assault, I think, if you had to listen to them day after day after day. It's like, no, please don't make me go to work. Please don't make me listen to Joy to the World again. Ah! When you only have to listen to it at your leisure, I think it's I think it's a lovely, I think it's a lovely sentiment and I think it's a lovely song. I mean, who doesn't want joy to the world? I want joy. Uh, I think joy is an awesome word. I love, uh, I love words that, that sort of sound like they are, like joy. I think holiday is another word that's like that. It, it sounds like it is. Uh, because who does not love a holiday? I love a holiday. Okay, I'm all giddy now. I gotta go find me some eggnog and, and you're gonna listen to my conversation with, uh, teacher Nick Cusamano. We are talking about an awesome project for your drama class. That's right, your drama class that is happening right now. The World Theater Video Project. Go, Nick! <laughs> Okay, hello, everybody. Uh, so today on the podcast, we are talking about a specific project. And the reason that I want to talk about this project is because it is something that every drama class can do. It is something that every drama club can do. Uh, teachers, you know, grab your students and pull them together and get them involved with the World Theater Video Project at worldtheatervideo.com. Um, I have teacher Nick Cusamano. Uh, on the podcast, he is the, you created this, right? This is your deal. Yes, it's something that uh, I was inspired by a tweet. Uh, one of my first Twitter followers was Carla O. She is the creator of the Drama Teachers Network. Ah. It's a WordPress blog, and she was one of my first Twitter followers. And uh, we got to know each other on Twitter, and then there um, other friends of mine, uh, Courtney, Elrod and then Mohammed Al Ashiri. The four of us kind of, um, I think Carla posted out, uh, March 27th is going to be World, uh, World Theater Day. And I'm yeah. like, we should do a video with two weeks and then <laughs> two weeks within that time. <laughs> um, hey, you know what? When you got two weeks, that's what you use, right? <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, let's record students doing all the world's stage from As You Like It. Uh, or, uh, yeah. And so um, we were able to get the footage together. So we had two schools from the uh, states, uh, along with um, another school, Mel Agar, who is uh, teaches in Illinois. Um, she sent in her video, and then Courtney's students, and then Mohammed's students, and then Carlos's students. Uh, and then I edited that in together, all together as a video, and then we posted it. I premiered, world premiered it at the Google, uh, and Education Summit in Chicago on the 27th, because that's where I was on that day. That was my, uh, Google demo slam. And, um, just had a great time connecting those students together and, um, from there, uh, right about that time, I found out I was uh, accepted to the Google Teacher Academy. Uh, which, now, what is that exactly? Well, two to three times a year, uh, it's kind of a competition. Uh, you have to create a one-minute video and um, about either classroom innovation, uh, change in your community, uh, and motivation and learning. You have to do one minute video and um so for me third time was the charm because I had tried twice before and I found out if I go 
What do I know? I know theater. Well, <laughs> that worked. <laughs> hey, go with I, what you know, right? <laughs> yeah. But I finally realized, oh, <laughs> go with what you know. So I turned Hamlet's advice to the players to, uh, I Google find it. So it was search, the search I pray you as Dan Russell, who's like the search guru at Google, pronounced it to you uh-huh. and just adapted it from there. And so that got me in. Uh, and as a Google certified teacher, one of your responsibilities is one, you spread the word of Google. And two, um, you come up with a Google uh, Certified Teacher Action Plan. And so that's where that inspiration from our March video, I came up with the idea of the World Theater Video Project. And, and so what's the, so how does this sort of take the next step from your, from that March video? What is the World Theater Video Project? What do, what do teachers and students do? Well, I would love to have a world theater or a world theater ensemble. That gets a little expensive. Yeah. <laughs> to put that together someplace. Uh, so, um, with, through Google and the YouTube video editor and all those cool free tools that Google gives us, I thought, well, let's create a virtual ensemble. And so, um, taking scripts probably either a month or, um, two months at a time. Uh, we're gonna, t- I think two months at a time might be our magic sweet spot, because <laughs> it gives time for teachers to plan for it. Yeah. Um, but I also know that the videos don't get made till the week or two before, but mm-hmm. they get some time to plan to include it into their lessons. <laughs> um, and I totally understand that. <laughs> um, and so we've been taking, uh, our, my first thought was go big or go home, so, Let's take the toughest. Uh, <laughs> I know you did pick the, the toughest one. I can't, it's like okay, here you go, the Raven. So that was the that was the uh, the first one, right? Uh, to be or not to be was the first. Oh, one. sorry, sorry. Then the Raven. Then the Raven. Um, and <laughs> I feel like I'm in. I feel like I'm in very good company here because uh, the the next video, which is the the next text, is is one of my monologues. We'll get back to that though. So okay, so you uh, so this is the whole the whole notion is that hopefully uh, teachers and students from all over the place will take the same text and um, do and just sort of interpret it in a video, right? Yes, and uh, then. And then what um, I want to do with it, or what I've been doing with it, is uh, in order to create that ensemble feel, I take uh, a bit of everyone's performance that's part of it and create a mashup video. And so, depending on how many people submit, I could, you know, I could be cutting really tight, or it just kind of depends what I get from uh, the world. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then we can use that to create that full ensemble. And then I have a YouTube playlist with all the um, groups that I have submitted. What, a, what an interesting idea just to see, like, just different interpretation, right? Mm-hmm. And just, like, from where you uh, are in the world, how do, you, how do you approach the same text? Yes, and, you know, and I love the mixing of the accents, too. That's <laughs> fun for me. Um, because, you know, I, Carla, my good friend from uh, Australia, which I was able to meet in person at the Sydney Google Teacher Academy or while I was in Sydney for that. So that was just kind of blew my mind that someone that I connected with on Twitter, you know, I'm meeting in person. <laughs> it's, 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 that That's the power of theater. That's the power of the Internet and just to have that mixed together. And it's just it's still kind of mind blowing to me. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Why is this so important now to, s- to sort of be combining um to making the world smaller by using these technologies w- with theater? Like why is this important now? Well, I think um I think as storytellers, we need to be actively engaging our students to storytelling and if we can get our students a a personal connection. And what I'd really love to start doing is, um, as the project builds, um, is to maybe start doing hangouts on air, um, you know, maybe a week after 
uh, the projects all in and talk with the groups and have them share with each other and kind of schedule some time things. And uh, that's something I'd like to move towards because then, you know, you have this connection of you've all worked on the same text. Um, and I think it's always, to me, I always want to try to find maybe a hook or some ways, either it's something students study or um, as we'll get to in just a little bit, or it's an issue that they're facing or, um, and I always love Shakespeare because I think um, if we take those short monologues, it's not like, it's not like you're tackling the whole play. No. Uh, but if you can get an understanding and have fun with the text. I well, think. maybe it's a doorway, you know? Like, yeah. That's all we need sometimes is just uh, a and, doorway in. And there's a lot of fun, interesting projects out there that are moving on that global scale. And I think we have this technology, why not connect and um, meet, meet people all over the world? I What I love about being a Google certified teacher is I have friends all over the world now. All over the world. I I want my my group was one of the most international. We had I think nineteen different countries. Um, wow. Um. So you know I have friend in Singapore. I have people that teach in Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, um, Alaska. Well, Alaska. <laughs> hey, that's still pretty <laughs> far away. <laughs> um. Uh, you know, Australia, my good friend, my roommate from the um, Google Teacher Academy, he's from India. Um, so Narendra was, you know, and that I can connect with and through the power of Google Hangouts. Yeah. Connect with people all over the world. So you, yeah. It's a matter of timing. Well, you've built this community, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so. I Why just, not do it with, with, with theater and with video, right? Why not? I think because I think at times we, one, we have to be our own advocates because I think, and I'm guilty of it myself, is we're always doing a show. But sometimes we have to step outside of that and help lead the way because hmm, we do project-based learning all the time. Oh, what's everyone talking about? Project-based learning. (laughs) I've I been just doing talked, it. Yeah, I just, <laughs> just talked to Gay Jones about that. <laughs> How many? This is my 19th year of teaching, so uh, 20 years of teaching project-based learning. We know how to do it. We understand the thing, and we know how to present for an authentic audience. Hello, Common Core. Yes. Um, for those of you in the states listening. <laughs> oh, it's everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's various versions. I know there. Kyle was talking, there's a similar thing in Australia, and I'm sure there's similar programs all over the world where, but, you know, we are the project-based learners, and we have to step out of our comfort zone and just doing a show where we have to look at either using technologies or projects or just helping, you know, the math teacher, okay, come on. We can do this and have a little bit more fun with teaching math. Or here's a practical thing that, you know, we always use math with sets all the time. Yeah. And um, family and consumer science with making costumes. And um, so uh, social studies with, you know, anytime you're doing anything historical, well, how does this show, show fit in with that? And it's just... It's all got, connected. Yeah, we've got to step out and be leaders. And so this is kind of a little bit of my push to do that. Um, Okay, so you've got, (laughs) so how about, uh, say there's a teacher listening who is like, oh, I can't, I can't do video. I can't, I can't get my kids to do this. So what's the one piece of advice you would give to someone who is like, um, this sounds like a great idea, but. Well, have the kids grab their cell phone. And have them film it. Awesome. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Why not? eh? It doesn't have... uh, um, I think people of our age have this notion that video is this complicated machinery when you're quite right. It's it's, it's picking up a phone. 
and really, I just, I mean, as long as I can see you and hear you, and I put a little bit of the guides on the um, website of, you know, rule of thirds, because I think I definitely want to see the actor's eyes to me, because that tells so much about h how they tell the story. Um, you know, it, it doesn't need to be really complicated. I think that's kind of the neat part about this, is if we can just do that, um, just that shot of that student, I think that says so much. And itself, you don't have to put all the, the, the whistles. bells and whistles, because I, I think this allows us to get to that core. Yeah. That you now, just tell the story, connect with the text, and share, and then, want to be cool when we get all those mixed together, and you have your groups work together, and you know, if you can plan ahead, you know, um, and I think. Because it's a little bit of trial and error <laughs> to get this project going and just finding the right mix of time and, uh, you know, how long is too long, you know, how long is too long. And I think I discovered the Raven a little too long. <laughs> and we probably should have liked it, uh, some of the stanzas, but not the whole thing, or divided by continent or... <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you figure this stuff out, right? You yeah. you you, know, you don't know until you try, and uh, and I have to say that okay, so like a student, and you know we have to put ourselves in the shoes of our students too, and um, just you know we learn by ourselves by trial and error. How many times do you use the same lesson plan every year after year without any sort of tweaking? So. <laughs> Well, and this, and the one, the, 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 vi the video, the monologue that is offering up, so it's not Shakespeare and it's not Poe, it's me. It's, uh, <laughs> it is a, so it's modern, it's modern language folks and it is a, um, I think it's pretty topical, uh, it's on a pretty topical issue and that's bullying. Yeah, uh, I think that's, I think if we have a mix of, and I think I'm thankful that you're able to allow us to use this. But what's what's cool is that it is um it, this is this is really theater at its core and that's interpretation right how do you take the same text and and work with it like I'm dying I can't wait to see what happens the cool part about this and it's also a little bit okay the waiting the waiting sometimes is a little well, you're taking a risk and and I think that's a good thing to show students too you know yeah. like look teachers can take risks too you know like why not uh, so the, the the due date I is January 25th is that right yes January 25th because I knew our friends in the southern hemisphere are on their summer break which is a little weird for me since I have snow on the ground here in St. Louis but um <laughs> And I know as a teacher right now, this is finals week and no, no recording is going to happen this week. No, and then it's <laughs> Christmas. That. And then it's Christmas and winter break. And so I was like, no, we're going to, for this one, we're definitely going to go with a, a two month time frame just because the way the timing works out. Awesome. Um, so that's worldtheatervideo.com, the text of the monologue. So everyone's, every, every group who does this uses the same monologue. And, uh, I think it would be an awesome thing if you, you took your class, you divided your class up into groups. Everyone took out their phones and they just came up with an interpretation of, uh, the same piece. And then, um, the sending, the, the submission information is also on the website, right? Yep. Next Yep, it's got broken down by description of the project, the script, uh, some guidelines. If you if you are using your phone, please turn it to the horizontal way, because otherwise your video gets very slim. <laughs> <laughs> if you're holding it it's vertical. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So before we, before I let you go on this, just talk a little bit because we, we really are moving into an era where it, it is the responsibility. It's becoming the responsibility of the teacher to become more tech savvy as, uh, our teenagers and, and those who come after them, um, are, are, they're digital natives. They live it. Yeah. They breathe it. They know it. They don't need to, they, they don't need to learn it because it's in them. And how can teachers and how can drama teachers um, embrace this uh, technology? How can they embrace technology? Um, 
Well, I think one thing is to just try to integrate it. Um, to me, one of the great things I love about technology, at least from the teacher end, is if you're using things like Google Docs, it's giving that feedback and um, using Google Forms. Uh, I know, just simply, Google Forms and T-shirt orders, they are your best friend. <laughs> Years, I, I counted this out because I did a blog post that. I have been charge of over 60 T-shirt orders in my lifetime as a teacher. <laughs> and I love that I found Google Forms because now... Oh, where the where did I lose that piece of paper where everyone signed on there? Oh, now we have to recreate it again. Still have to chase them for the money. I haven't fully you integrated out that. technology to do that for you. Well, I know it's possible, but I also have to get district approval for that. Part, so. <laughs> it's robots. We need robots. <laughs> but uh, at least I know I can know this is the number of T-shirts I have to order. <laughs> Have you uh, have you used uh, aside from Google Docs, like just in terms of um, like like drama activities? Have you been able to integrate technology? Um, yeah, I use um, Edmodo is a great one to use, and I'm um, using YouTube. Um, the Royal National Theater has tons of great videos. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have a great introduction to Greek theater. It's only like seven minutes long, but it gets that all that basics in there. Um, so I love finding those things. Of course, kids can spend hours finding performances on there. Um, one big thing I really like now is there's two great things to help you create your posters. And you don't need to be a graphic artist anymore. You just need to have an oh. idea. And one's called Canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. And the other one's called lucidpress.com, and they will help you create great advertisements or use with your students to create a project or, um, I mean, just the whole process of creating, you know, how you can use a collage yep. to help describe a character. Well, now you can do that virtually, and just, you know, students can gather the pictures. Um, the British Museum just at least a million pictures that you can use and remix. How awesome is that? Oh, my God. Holy cow. <laughs> and the, there's just new stuff all the time. And to me, I think, uh, and the Google just had this thing called the Open Gallery that you can go in and sign up for. And if you've seen their Google Cultural Institute. Yes, great, love it. Great for, um, like, if you're doing Diary of Anne Frank, anything historical. Well, now you can do your own version of that, or you have to sign up to get the the invite, but go to that and do now. Wouldn't that be, how cool would that to be? One, to create a design display that you could integrate all your parts for a show and uh, maybe put up a computer monitor in the lobby, or your a student interviewing for colleges because it's that time of year. Okay, well, you can do a PowerPoint, but how about this interactive thing? And then you can mm -hmm. put your own reasoning on there and they see it visually and you could do a video and you can add all these other cool things in there. Um, well, I'm excited just, now. <laughs> there's just a ton, a ton, ton of stuff out there. And just to get kids to spark their creativity. Um, That's their, awesome. Yeah, their, there's... There's tons out so there. Much, yes. Um, and if you want some of the resources, you can go to edtech uh, for theater com. That's your website? That is my blog. Yep. Yes, we will put uh, links to everything that uh, gets mentioned here on the show notes. Um, and that's awesome. Okay, so how do you feel? We think we're, we're good with World Theater Video Project, and we are excited okay. about uh, all of the amazing videos that are going to come in from all I, over the world, right? Yes, I want love to see uh, all the work that you're doing and love to create something new out of it. I can't wait to see what um, everyone can bring to the table. It's going to be very exciting, and then... Um, if you have ideas for the next one, I know we're going to hit February after that. So 
the back of my head, I've been thinking love sonnets or maybe Shakespearean sonnet. I don't know. Or if there, I will, I am open to suggestions for that next part too. Awesome. Um, and where can they send that? Where can they uh, email you? Uh, they can email me at nick at edtech, the number four, theater, Canadian spelling, dot com. Only way to spell it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you. It was great to chat with you. Thanks so much, Nick. So... Like every teacher I've been talking to right about now, uh, Nick was about seven levels of exhausted, and, and I really appreciated that he took the time to talk. So before we go, let's do some theater folk news. Who doesn't love new plays? I love new plays, and we just keep rolling them out. It's like little presents. It's very appropriate for the season just for you. So today I want to share with you uh, some plays from a fellow Canadian from the fabulous province of Newfoundland, oh, Gary Rogers. He has just published two plays with us. And if you want something exciting, something different, and not your same old competition play, I beg you to buy a copy of either Layers or lose not thy head layers is a it's a play within a play within a cabbage within an onion just when you think you know what's going on you don't so if you like to take your audience on a twisted journey uh, this is the play for you pick up layers and lose not thy head has uh, william shakespeare's sister up for beheading for trying to impersonate him and write his plays when he sort of run off with some dough. Death is standing by, a severed head chimes in, the executioner is depressed, causing a Sigmund Freud type doctor to make an appearance. Uh, so what I'm, this all gathers up to is if you like your Shakespeare with a dash of Monty Python, or your Monty Python with a dash of, Sh with a dash of Shakespeare, Lose Not Thy Head is going to be the play for you. I love these two plays and I think that they make a, an awesome, awesome addition to our catalog. And again, you're looking for something you haven't seen before yet in competition. Gary Rogers, Layers, Lose Not Thy Head. Go to uh, www.theaterfolk.com. Again, that is Layers and Lose Not Thy Head. And finally, where, oh, where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com slash theaterfolk. You can find us on the Stitcher app. And you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. Go over there. Search on the word theater folk. Give us some feedback. Give us a review. That would be so nice. And that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care. Me, me, me. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. <sighs> I love the classics. Classics.